Hello to everybody. And thank you, Giuliana and uh, uh, Lorenzo, for this invitation. OK. It's not very good to be seen. I think it's one part cut. But just uh, to have an idea of uh, go strolling through what I want to talk. So the question of this uh, uh, crisis, I think uh, uh, Europe is actually at the big crisis. Its a genocidal histories uh, shows that Europe is the crisis and not is only caught in the crisis. So what I want to talk today, I want to talk about what I named resist, breath, maybe like Black Lives Matter, block, art contrasted by life. And um, to do this, I have actually three references. In reality, I will talk about a project uh, that was uh, uh, curated uh, by a group of uh, curators. Uh, I was part of this group. And uh, um, I take uh, as a reference that I found very important three elements uh, to talk about how artists actually deals uh, and deal with the crisis. Um, it's a series of lectures that I do with my colleague. Uh, then it's actually the project that I want to tackle. And uh, we published a, a catalog. And the title of this catalog is telling very clearly what is my uh, center point today. Uh, the title is Stories of Traumatic Pasts, uh, Colonialism, Antisemitism, and Turbo-Nationalism, practically three genocidal points of Europe that uh, it's present and we can see the outcomes always again and again, though it said never again. Again, we see what this history is bringing and producing. And then it's also a text that I wrote for this catalog, being one of the curator strategies of this place. A new sense of urgency. This was very nicely put by Lorenzo. And uh, we see this because life is really pressing on art. Art uh, seems cannot work with what's going on and is produced by life. And uh, one of the su suggestion of this uh, uh, question of new sense of urgency, um, suggestion how to solve this, definitely is recurs to history. Though history is all the time repeated. And uh, um, why? Because uh, uh, this history is not something yesterday. And I like uh, uh, to make this reference uh, to another uh, project. It was a project uh, uh, done uh, in uh, 2020, 2019, 2020, uh, practically with the title Future of the Past, where uh, it was said, tell me about yesterday, tomorrow. And this yesterday was actually cut. And the project was, of course, about uh, the whole uh, history of national socialism and the repercussion of art. And uh, for that, yesterday was really cut, because the yesterday, in a certain way, because of these repetitions, cannot bring really the tomorrow. But the tomorrow cannot be seen without history. So uh, the project, the project that uh, is central in these relations between yesterday and tomorrow is uh, um, an exhibition that uh, we curated and worked uh, the last four years with the title Genealogy of Amnesia, Rethinking the Past for a New Future of Conviviality. This was a title of the research project. We started in 2018 and practically finished and concluded this uh, last year. Uh, for doing this, and I hope you can see something, yes, maybe the last part is cut it should be a little bit more high, the, but it's possible to follow. We have these three genocidal histories. As I said, Europe is the producer of genocides. So one is definitely colonialism. And uh, we made a reference to Belgium uh, colonialism, one of the most brutal. All colonialism was brutal, but Belgium was actually extraordinarily brutal. It was a private property first by the king 
and then it was all uh, processes of financialization behind uh, and also the stupor of the British colonialists and the French, like they were different, but they were not. Then it's actually the question of anti-Semitism that is central to Europe. Austrian anti-Semitism, it's uh, such a case. And then what else than former Yugoslavia with its uh, turban nationalism and the genocide, Srebrenica. So again, never again, Srebrenica genocide and many things that were going on in Sarajevo are very similar if we can recollect that past what's going on today or in reference to Ukraine. The raping of Muslim women, or the destruction completely, like what is called by theoreticians deathscapes, death, or on all over the space. So how we connect these two stories? Of course, amnesia is first, because otherwise we will not be today here and talking about the crisis, like it's now. The crisis is central to Europe. Uh, so, to think about amnesia means uh, uh, practically to think about what blocks memories and also histories. And second, the point that uh, we wanted to uh, put very uh, clear is uh, uh, the question of intervention, developing counter amnesia strategies. Not enough to think what is amnesic, but how you actually fight against. Um, this is uh, uh, the poster or one of the image that was central for our project and this exhibition uh, that was presented in the Welt Museum in Vienna uh, that has these two pa uh, uh, polarities. On one part uh, you see the hands that are very much connected with the Belgian uh, colonialism because they were uh, cutting hands in uh, Congo. Uh, in order to make uh, um, the devastation and the fear and the violence so present that the wealth that will be produced by the Congolese will actually be bigger and taken. So hands are down and up it's actually this phantomic idea of a certain Europe. So uh, the, uh, what, uh, what was the, the elements of the show was uh, uh, 12 chapters. And the idea was to make or produce a counter archive for future memories. We had two lines. One line was artistic positions, the other was workshops, talks, and so on. And why? Because it was uh, the idea to build an accumulated set of tools, visual fluctuations, interferences, fictionalization, but the point of everything of this was actually to disempower or re-empower, or as uh, uh, the uh, decolonial theory will say, to learn and unlearn. That is a process that is key for the time that we live. Um, and uh, with this, I actually uh, want to really emphasize this decolonial move. Uh, that is uh, present and it was present in the work, but also is very present in some of the works that I want to show you. The decolonial move uh, uh, resides and try to confront with some urgent questions. First, to build a counter archive. So not to say we have an archive, but the counter archive to recover memory and future. Then uh, to see what is with the trauma because every crisis is a traumatic experience. But here the idea is also to emphasize that the place of trauma is without using a cheap alibi, because trauma can be used also very much for uh, cheap reasons. And then it's to talk about aesthetics. Can we talk about aesthetics? Well, everything is a violence. I will propose immediately anti-imperialist aesthetic. This could be maybe the solution, maybe the only one, uh, also making a reference to Beral Madra and uh, actually what was said uh, to uh, the question of uh, uh, capitalism, uh, neoliberal, imperial capitalism. So what is this decolonial activism? Um, uh, the theoreticians from Africa, Nomusa Makubu, uh, said uh, making, uh, writing a text for us for the catalog 
Carting Madness, Reflections on Pain, Decoloniality and in Institutions. And one of the ta uh, tasks today is to think about institutions. And she said, decolonial activism identifies institutions as spaces engendering a dissociation from present realities, spaces of colonial fantasy, deception, and cognitive dissonance. This disconnectedness and contradictions also also frames institutions as schizophrenic and paranoid. And we see this, what to do, making something new, trying to find a solution, and then also to hide a proper place, making and producing the amnesia about what I was talking. And she's saying art museums, for example, uh, come, have come under fire for their alienating institutional cultures and for perpetuating imperial histories, even as their counteract. This is really a schizophrenic situation. So uh, it's also making just a reference uh, to Cecilia Alemani that was pretty paradoxical when looking about the objects uh, and uh, making a reference uh, to what was in this present Biennale edition, uh, she says, it feels like one is looking at monuments from an alien civilization or artifacts on display in a strange post-human museum. And again, instead to look to history of how humanity has been racialized, sorted out, divided, but who is human and who cannot be considered human. And we had a very good example. Running to save a life from Ukraine, coming to Poland, black people, those of color, had to be in line and give the priority to those who were white refugees. So this is really an idea, what means this humanity? So a new category of post-human museums, maybe we should start first to think what is and who define what is a humanity. So some works to come to the conclusion. One of the work that was presented at the exhibition was by Elizabeth Bakamba Bamba Tamve, the eye. And the work is very telling. It's done in the pandemic time. What Elizabeth Tambwe do, uh, does, she practically entered the museum. The museum has all, uh, the Welt Museum, all these artifacts. Nobody knows from where they are coming, but a colonial past is there. Um, different objects without uh, notification, stolen, taken, and then she put her black eye and looks this and actually make like an analysis of what is there presented. And uh, uh, practically, uh, it's very interesting to think what she says. She asserts that the museum can no longer be seen as a place where the truth is presented according to a single, a single field of knowledge. Rather, it must speak of different ways of seeing and observing. It should continuously question the discourse discourse it proposes and imposes. My point is that artists, groups, activists know how to deal with this crisis. The question is if you can follow them and look at them. Or it's another project that we uh, had uh, presented there. And this is actually the project by Monique Mepafoba. She went back to uh, Congo. She made the analysis of the time of Congo being colonized, but also the process after the decolonization. And here you see an image uh, that is uh, from the albums. She talks with those who are, uh, uh, who are remembering this period of the 60s and working with these projects. She make uh, um, uh, the whole analysis, who is in these images, not only an ethnographic, like image of something, but really precise, who are those who actually were part of her family and were part of that society in Congo in the time before uh, the decolonization, that means in the colonial time, just in the moment of uh, the revolution and after. So uh, the counter archive, the counter archive is temporally squeezed between the post. You have colonial, Holocaust, and former, East and Europe. 
And I think this is quite well to understand our time, how we are actually this Europe, how to treat and to think about the crisis. Time has a very important place. So uh, maybe to come to a conclusion, uh, a very uh, telling project in this exhibition, it's the work by Lana Chmaichan and Nadela Yushic. And they propose bedtime stories. Uh, what they do in their project. That is some, a soundscape. So it's, uh, the images are not there. You have to go and to listen. And what is the bed, bedtime stories? Uh, practically, they decided to remember their childhood. And this childhood is nothing else than the 90s, the time of the war when Sarajevo was besieged by paramilitary Serbian troops around, and they had to spend all their childhood in the basement for years. They had to develop all their fictions, their way how they will actually, if they will still be alive, what will be the life. And uh, uh, practically, uh, that uh, uh, besieged city uh, that uh, uh, was uh, one of the longest in the whole century to think uh, about uh, what and how the war can function. But also, uh, as you can read, uh, how many people and civilians were injured, the destructions that stay. And uh, uh, this is the image uh, of the presentation in which uh, uh, you come near and you actually listen to these stories. And when they say it's a bedtime story, they say sometimes uh, at that time when they were uh, 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 being part of that stories, and then when they started to rethink what was these stories, they said maybe the Occident cannot think differently about the war than just as some kind of a story and not a history. So. One of the conclusions is that trauma is more than a sequence. It's a cut. Time is suspended. Yet we see that the world in the current moment is without a leash, very clearly. The virus is spreading globally, while racist violence is everywhere, structural, systematic, and deadly. Even in the war, even between the refugees, it's a differentiation. One life matter, the other doesn't matter, nothing. And in the moment when we had actually Black Lives Matter, that is the most paradoxical situation that can happen to us. All these big manifestos, institutions writing, making all the letters open in the last two years, everything forgotten in a minute. So if I come just to the very end, uh, and this is the aesthetics. I said, can we talk? OK, counter archive, trauma, and the last moment, aesthetics. Can we talk about aesthetics? This is the place. As curators, we do this. We talk and think about aesthetics. And uh, uh, here I will make really a reference uh, uh, to um, uh, the possibility to rethink aesthetics in a different way. Um, first, uh, with uh, Rizwana Bradley, uh, uh, when she says, Maybe we can go back to almost forgotten ideology of imperialism. And then she made another reference to another important position, Dijon Brand. And uh, Dijon Brand is uh, the writer and um, somebody who is rethinking uh, the whole colonial past uh, from uh, her Canadian place today, but she's going back and rethink what was actually the Americas, what was going on. And so she said, um, making a reference to Dijon Brand, uh, Rizvana Bradley, we need a thorough renovation of aesthetic. Where can we locate black aesthetic praxis in the violent reduction of both pure matter and pure form? After Dijon Brand, what would it mean to call for the death of the anesthetic of imperialism? And precisely this uh, uh, death of the aesthetic of imperialism is a certain possible idea that can be proposed to go out of the crisis and also to maybe think of the future. Um, and with this, 
So with the death of the aesthetic of imperialism, I finish today. Thank you.